a third-person retro sci-fi PvPvE extraction shooter made by X Dice developers Embark Studios. Arc Raiders. What do we know? What have Alpha Tester said about the game? Let's get into it. How's it going, everybody? My name is Magneti. Welcome to the Mothership, your all-in-one extraction game news source. Today, we're going to be talking about everything you need to know about Arc Raiders. First off, I want to start by making it simple for you. We're going to talk about five categories. Release contingencies, gameplay mechanics and features, the hub, player reviews, quotation marks, rumors, and news. So before starting, I have three disclaimers for you. Disclaimer number one, a large majority of this information that is in this video is from leaks. So if you don't want to hear about leaks, I would stop watching this video now. Also, a lot of it is partially based on my opinion and my thoughts and feelings. So that's disclaimer number one. Disclaimer number two, I'm going to assume that you already know what Arc Raiders is. And if you don't, then you should go ahead and go to the third timestamp on this video up here on screen. Disclaimer number three, this game still is in alpha testing. It's currently closed right now, but Embark is a small studio, and I want you to keep all of that in mind when we go over these things. This game is really not set to release for a while yet, and that's going to be the first thing we go over is release contingencies. So just keep in mind that all of this information is just alpha level game, okay? So starting with release contingencies, the finals needs to come out first. So if you don't know what the finals is, it's just another game that Embark Studios is working on. It's not really directly related to Arc Raiders, but it is their main project right now. And they have already openly stated that they need to release the finals first before they're going to completely shift their focus onto Arc Raiders. So basically what that means is that don't expect Arc Raiders to come out anytime soon unless the final has been released. If you're watching this video and the finals is out, then that's awesome. You're pretty far in the future in my opinion because the finals doesn't even have an official release date right now. So what can we guess that the ETA is for Arc Raiders? Honestly, in my opinion, I would say don't expect anything before 2025. That really sucks to say that. I'm hoping for 2024, probably quarter three or four of 2024. However, I don't have high hopes for that. I think that would be awesome, but it's probably more likely to expect a like quarter two 2025 release thereabout. Something else that probably needs to happen before they can even release the game is that there's going to be a lot more alpha testing and beta testing as well. They haven't even gotten to a beta point yet, so once they're done with alpha testing, they'll probably move into beta testing. If not, then maybe they'll feel as though the game is good, but I'm sure they'll move into beta testing at some point. And really, that's it. Those are all the release contingencies that I have. So moving into gameplay mechanics and features, and this is where a lot of the leaks are going to kick in. So again, if you're not huge on leaks, just go to a different part of the video or watch a different video. So right now there's two gameplay modes, there's solo and duo. Now I'm sure they'll likely add more like trios and quads because a lot of what I've read on Reddit is that solo and duo is not ideal. So hopefully they add more, but we don't know for sure. Now, if you're wondering where I got all this information, just go ahead and do some Googling on your own. I'm not going to reveal my sources because there's a lot of NDA and EULA violations that are surrounding where I got this information from. So I don't want to get caught up in that and I don't want to get anybody in trouble. So if you want to find out where I got this information from, go ahead and just Google your local Reddit. Moving on, loadouts. So if you've played Tarkov or the Cycle Frontier or Hunt Showdown, I believe has loadouts as well, there's going to be gear fear. So it doesn't seem very extreme like something like Tarkov because it seems uh, decently okay to accrue money and kind of get different gear. It's not as quick as I would hope it would be, but it's not crazy hard looking, at least. We don't know for sure, and again, this game's still in alpha. But there is loadouts. You do lose your stuff when you die. All the good stuff from an extraction shooter. All right, missions. So there are likely going to be missions. This isn't completely verified by the source that I used. However, there was a voice mentioning missions in the game, so I would presume that there are probably different missions that you can acquire, just like in Tarkov, that you can go in, perform the mission, come out, turn it in, either get money or reputation or something like that, right? So another thing here in the gameplay mechanics and features is going to be a timed extract. So there is a roughly 30 minute timed extract that might vary based on full release or, you know, a lot of different things. Maybe there's different locations with different timed extract periods. Maybe there's a game mode for unlimited time. Who knows? But from what I was seeing, there is a timed extract and it was 30 minutes long. 
Looting. Okay, so this one is a little depressing. The looting looks really clunky. It looks like it needs a lot of TLC. It's very... Mm, meh. It just... It, you open containers and you control click on the item you want to put it in your inventory. And, eh, you know, it's just kind of meh but whatever. Anyway, next I want to talk about the movement. There's climbing, zip lines, and stamina. I want to talk about all of these. So climbing, it's not like literally climbing, like scaling buildings or climbing rock walls, but you can kind of scale like smaller structures. So like say an HVAC hut or something like an office building, HVAC hut on top of the building or something like something that's about eight feet high. It looks like you can probably scale it and climb to the top of it. There are zip lines that you can use around the game. And there is of course stamina for sprinting, which was probably pretty easy to suspect. There's also an in-game map, which I thought was really cool and useful, because there's a, a couple of... Ex there's one... Tarkov. Okay, it's Tarkov. Fuck Tarkov. There's no in-game map. Anyways, now the extraction mechanic. This is going to be the last one other than gunplay. The extraction mechanic is kind of cool looking. It's literally a hut like a bunkery style hut looking thing that has an elevator in it. And you walk up to this extraction mechanic, you interact with it. It calls the elevator up from underground because the colony that you live in is underground. It's a little bit of lore behind it. And once the elevator is up top, you go inside and you have either two minutes to extract automatically, or you can stand and hold E to activate a panel to force extract. So that way it goes a little faster. However, you are a little vulnerable in that situation. Next up is going to be gunplay. This is last but not least here. Don't really have a lot of information on this, unfortunately. The guns do have a very steampunky kind of aspect to them, retro sci-fi steampunk kind of vibe to them with a classic third person aiming mechanic because the game, of course, is in third person. That's about all I have for the gunplay. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see any shooting or combat interactions or anything like that. I would have loved to have seen something like that or have gotten my hands on this game in the beta or alpha testing in the summer, but unfortunately, I did not. Rolling into the hub. This one is a bit sad for me because it is almost the exact same as Tarkov. It's built into the main menu and money is a little too hard to come by in my opinion. I know I talked a little bit about it earlier that it wasn't too difficult, but but it, it looks too hard. What I'm trying to say is that it's not complex, but it, it just takes a while. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. You collect a bunch of stuff and you can sell it or you can craft with it, but you just have to search around a lot to find enough stuff to sell or craft. Ammo is not explained very well in the uh, trading menus. It's, um, you know, the, like light, medium, and heavy ammo. The medium ammo s explicitly states that it's for like assault rifles, but the light ammo has no description. Now you could presume that it's for handguns and SMGs, which would probably be a good guess. But if we look at a game like The Outer Worlds, if you've ever played it, it's completely unrelated. However, a light assault rifle uses heavy ammo in The Outer Worlds, so you never fucking know, right? Anyways, moving on. There are five traders. There's Operations, Gun Shop, Medical Bay, Grenade Shop, and Security. Now, I'm sure these names will probably change when the full game is released or just later on down the road because these are kind of goofy names. I mean, Gun Shop and Medical Bay kind of makes sense, but why not just put the Grenade Shop with the Gun Shop? And like, what is Security and Operations? Do you get missions from Operations, missions from Security? I don't know. Not really sure. It looks like there might be two maps in the game as well. I know this doesn't necessarily have to do with the hub itself, but this is about everything I could gather from like the main menu hub area screen. Now, I don't know if it's two maps or two deployment areas on the same map, but that's all I really saw was that there were two options to deploy to. So I would assume that it's probably two different deployment areas in one map, but that's really all I could get out of the main menu hub area. If you found any of this information useful so far, go ahead and drop a sub down below so that I can keep making content like this for you and so that you can stay up to date on anything extraction. All right, next up is going to be player reviews, and some of these make me kind of worried, and I literally have in my script here, not going to pre-script this part in any way, raw reaction here basically, and what I'm getting at here is that I took some screenshots of these Reddit posts that I want to read to you and share with you and kind of give you, I've read a couple of them, but really only had like a mental reaction, so I kind of want to share my verbal reaction here. So this first one, this Redditor said, it's basically just the Cycle Frontier, which ironically announced they're shutting down recently, but the aesthetic is way better. 
better. And something I forgot to mention in the gameplay mechanics portion is that the robots or drones, there's a pretty wide variety of them already in the alpha area. And this is kind of why I would slightly disagree with this. However, I do kind of agree with this at the same time. I'm kind of split 50-50 because the aesthetics are definitely way different. It's third person, which the cycle was not third person. Some of the mechanics are quite different looking and feeling from the cycle. I mean, obviously every extraction game the Thus far has a lot of similarities to it. I feel like there's enough differences to not call it a Cycle Frontier clone. But yes, anyways, the I wanted to talk about the drones a little bit quick. The drones or robots or whatever, there's a lot of different variations. There's small ones, big ones, flying ones. Uh, I guess the Ark is the massive one that a bunch of people, you know, in the trailer and everything, they shoot down. And But yeah, that is one thing I forgot to mention, that there's a lot of drones in the game already, which is great to see. So anyway, sorry, moving on to the next Reddit post. Uh, this one's kind of long. I'm going to kind of just skim over it. Environments are beautiful. A lot of areas to fight uh, other than robots to regularly shoot at. Gunplay, nothing special. New or original, bland as fuck. Yep, makes sense. PvP is fine, I guess. Sparsely populated maps. Uh, okay, yep, yep. Complaining about the PvE aspects as it's possible, though bastardly, to wait until someone engages the bots. Shoot them once the bots have done the most of work. Yep. Much of what made me interested interested in this game is the setting and so very little of it comes through as it is. Crafting seems dull and bog standard. Game blue screens, that doesn't even matter right now. Looting needs to be more efficient, I agree 100%. Duels didn't feel big enough, I was talking about this earlier. Three or four seams can make battles more interesting, how wide spaces are. PvPVE is not the biggest issue, it's a blandness expectation, should definitely be dialed way back. I didn't see anything in the alpha that really stood out and made me think I really want to play this skin. As a free to play, it may make it, depending on monetization. So basically, what this person is critiquing here, they're critiquing that the game is bland. And um, I think overall, I would agree from what I have seen. It does look fairly bland. It looks like the stereotypical extraction shooter that every gaming company has made. I feel like everybody's trying to copy Escape from Tarkov. I feel like the Cycle Frontier did a really good job with their hub, but then everything else outside of that was like literally the same. There was, you know, three different factions, I guess that you could say, and then, you know, you, you did missions for them and they all had shops and different items, and but it felt the exact same as Tarkov in that aspect. So I think if Arc Raiders wants to be successful here, what they need to do is come up with a one, a better hub, two, overhaul their looting mechanics. Again, this game is still in alpha. Uh, three, I mean, keep the visuals and everything. That's great. Four, definitely they need to think about how they're going to balance the PvEVP aspect or PvPVE, however you want to look at it, because that, like this person mentions, it could totally be disheartening to engage in the robots and then, you know, have to just get fucked by another player. So yeah, I agree with a lot of this. However, no, there's no however. That's just really it. I think I just agree with a lot of what this person said. So next up, this one's a little long as well. I'll read this one verbatim because I was skimming the last one. I kind of felt like I'd lost some brain cells doing that. So so this person says, I agree with all of this. The third person aspect feels really clunky and really pulls me out of the game immersion wise. The hub or menus make the game feel very bland and lifeless. Why the fuck do I care about the other raiders or this underground colony? The only interaction I have with it are menus. Totally agree with that. There needs to be an interactive hub in the these newer extraction shooter games. Nothing about the world you explore in the missions is interesting. Everything is post-apocalyptic, empty, wasteland. It's like reloading the same Fallout buildings and rooms on repeat. I could see that for sure. The robots are meh and just serve to annoy you or alert other raiders to your location. Again, thinking about PvPVE balancing. The technical aspect is also really frustrating. Went into a match, fully kitted out, my game crashed, and I lost four hours of grinding calling it quits. Yeah, now that's, um, that's an alpha game for you. I'm not really gonna take that last part into consideration again because it's an alpha. However, that does suck for this guy. It's kind of uh, saddening, you know, with the whole reloading the same Fallout buildings and rooms on repeat. I can definitely see how that would be repetitive. There needs to be some sort of way to spice this up. I think the player base is kind of small for the game right now, so it's hard to really determine, you know, how many people you're going to be fighting with, interacting with, etc. to kind of get that PvP interaction you're looking for. 
All right, we've got two more. I don't know why I chose all the long Reddit posts. I don't know, I, I just felt like they had more content. All right, so this person said, I went in there expecting nothing, was actually surprised to get in the closed beta. It's an alpha, but you know, whatever. It's an enjoyable extraction shooter with a bit more focus on movement, dodge roll, zip lines, which I really like. I agree with that, I think that's awesome. The third person perspective is not something I'm used to, but ended up enjoying after a couple of games. That's good to hear. I'm excited to experience a third person as well. I've played Hawked, Hawked is third person. It's pretty good so far, however, it's not a true extraction shooter. Anyways, but like the rest of the community said, it's very bland. Again, that's kind of sad. It desperately needs something to break out of the mold, be it a real emphasis on movement, way more gadgets and tools to have it break away from the simple gunfights when scouring the maps, or I don't know, perhaps vehicles to... That's a great idea. Vehicles to traverse the map. I love that. That's a fantastic idea. So he's saying something to break out of the mold. So emphasis on movement. I would agree with that. I think that and vehicles wouldn't be a bad idea. Gadgets and tools. Certainly. Why not add all of the above here? Break away from simple gunfights when scouring the maps. Not really sure what they're implying there. Maybe more tactical gunfights or not really sure. Anyway, destructible. He mentions in destructible environment. He says, I mean, these are battlefield devs working on the title. Could be a hassle to implement, but it would definitely set it apart. I agree 100%. That would be a lot of effort, but if they could do that, that would be absolutely insane. And this guy lastly says, otherwise it will definitely end up like the cycle, which would be a shame. Love the environment. I agree with all of this 100%. Well, 110%. I, like, I have nothing else to say. This guy's a genius. All right, last one here. This one's really long, so probably just going to speed this up, honestly, because it's so fucking long. It's really good. It feels a lot like Hunt. Most of the complaints I see here are mostly due to the alpha state of the game. Lots of placeholders like 2D graphics and voice work. It's very unfinished and unpolished, but the bones are there for a really solid middle ground between EFT and DMZ HS. I would assume that's Escape from Tarkov, Modern Warfare and Hunt showed up. The hub needs to be a base you can actually walk around and talk to the traders, party up with other people. 100% agree with this, for sure. I like the stealth mechanics of hiding from players and robots. There needs to be a larger variety of robots, especially robots that can enter structures and walk around like T-100s. I'm assuming that's a Star Wars reference. However, I feel like there's a decent variety for an alpha game as of right now, but yes, I wouldn't disagree that there should be more variety once the game is fully released or in a better state. The robot AI is fun and engaging. Using smokes to hide and get away is a fun mechanic. Picking your battles is more important and intense in this game compared to Hunt Showdown. Okay, so now this reminded me of something else that I learned as well. So he said robot AI is fun and engaging. So the robot AI is actually developed off of a true learning AI. So there's a clip out there somewhere of the developers introducing their learning AI and their ARC robot, the big giant robot with eight legs, died approximately 60,000 times as an AI to learn how to properly walk, which is absolutely incredible. So having a true AI active in a game is is really interesting and unique. Continuing on, this guy says the graphics are jaw-dropping. The environmental interactions like Spooking Birds is a lot like Hunt Showdown, and it's really good. The sound is really good, and you can hear things from miles off a lot like Hunt Showdown. To be honest, it seems like it has the potential to be the best extraction shooter, in my opinion. We'll see how they decide to tune the gameplay. I'd love to see a larger mode that uses the entire map instead of small sections of it. Okay, so that's interesting. This guy mentions that the two spawning locations, so it must be one map, but two separate sections, which is interesting. Really interesting. I kind of like this idea. However, I do agree that I would rather use the entire map in instead. Also, when he says, uh, like, seems like it has the potential to be the best extraction shooter, ah, uh, potential, sure, but like every game has that potential, you know what I mean? But for the most part, I really like what this guy said and agree with a lot of it as well. All right, so that was the player reviews. Now, I got a lot of different things off of Reddit as well. So again, if you wanna do your own research, feel free to go out and look at that as well. Lastly here, we've got rumors and news. Now I have two rumors and two news things for you. Now, the first news item is gonna be that there's been no tweets from the Ark Raiders account since May 16th, which is absolutely flabbergasting. May 16th of 2023, which is when the closed alpha started. So that's wild in my opinion. Opinion, they must be really focusing on the finals. The first rumor I've got for you is that it's potential, and it's been rumored, clearly, because this is a rumor, that Nexon may have had a direct impact on the original genre change from PvE to PvPvE extraction shooter. Obviously not confirmed, because it is a rumor. The next news point I have for you is that the loadout, quote-unquote, uh, a news gaming news source, speculated back in 2021 that the release date for Arc Raiders would be 2024, so that's pretty crazy. I know COVID 
COVID-19 was still decently around in 2021. Honestly, my memories faded about that, but um, it's not surprising. 2024 would be an ideal kind of a pipe dream, honestly. But yeah, let's hope for 2024. All right, last rumor I've got for you is there might be factions and or reputation implementations, okay? Now, the big reason I would think this is that based off of the different areas on the maps, they have unique and different looking styles. So I've kind of developed this theory, but I've also heard a little bit about it as well, mostly about the reputation. But if you look at the different areas of the map, it has very distinct, almost faction-y, like caveman style faction or clan type looks to it. So it makes me feel as though that maybe the PvPVE aspect is going to be, you know, you only have to attack, you know, or you can only attack raiders of other factions or clans or something, which would be interesting. I don't know if that's the case or not, because again, this is a rumor. Now, about the reputation, that was, you know, pretty self-explanatory reputation with like traders and stuff. It's pretty probable. I feel like that reputation is going to be a real thing. However, again, still a rumor. We don't truly know. Well, other than that, stick around for more extraction game news and we'll talk again real soon. Peace.